Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is Validate Stack Sequences. So in this question, we're given two integer arrays, pushed and popped, and each of them will contain distinct values. It means that the values inside each array are distinct and there might be common values between both, but each of the arrays will have distinct integers in them. And our task is to return a boolean value true or false. We have to return true if the popped and pushed arrays are a result of a sequence of push and pop operations on an initially empty stack, else we have to return false. Now let's take a look at this example and see how this question can be solved. I've taken the same example given to us, this is the pushed array and this is the popped array. So initially we start off with an empty stack. So we have our empty stack, we are going to push until we see our topmost element from the popped array. So using a for loop, we iterate from left to right. So until we get our first popped element, we start adding those elements into the stack. So stack is last in first out, right? So the last element that entered the stack will be the first element that comes out of the stack. First, I'm adding one. Next, we add two. Next, we add three. Next, we add four. Now, it is equal to the first popped element. So we pop whatever is present inside the first element and increment that element. So 4 will be popped and we increment j. Now we add the rest of our elements from the pushed array. So 5. And now we are checking if that is the element pointing at j. Yes, 5 is pointing at j. So we remove that element and increment j. Now no more elements have to be added. So the topmost element is the element which j is pointing to. So we remove that element and we increment j. And we check if the element pointing at j is present at the top of the stack. Yes, it is present. So remove that element and increment j. Now check if that element is pointing to the element at the top of the stack. Yes, it is pointing. So remove it and we reach the end of the popped array. So here you can see we processed all the elements inside the pushed array and we processed all the elements inside the popped array. So we can return true for this output which means so there is a combination which is forming this pushed and popped array from an empty stack. So we are going to check if j has reached the end of the popped array. If j is at the end of the popped array, it means the output is true. If j has not reached the end of the popped array and we added all the elements, then we can return false. So now let's implement these steps in a Java program. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name and this is the pushed array and this is the popped array. And the task is to return a boolean value so that is the return type so we either return true or false as the output so let's start off by declaring a stack which will contain integers so as of now the stack is empty now we create a j pointer which will iterate through the popped array and now using a for loop i'll start iterating through the pushed array from the starting index position till the end of the pushed array and in each iteration i'm going to push one integer at a time from the pushed array into the stack and immediately after pushing one element into the stack i'm going to check if the stack is not empty and the j pointer is less than the end of the popped array because j pointer is used to iterate through the popped array and i'm comparing the last inserted element that is the topmost element inside the stack is equal to the current element that is being popped. If that is the case, I'm going to remove that element from the stack and then I'm going to increment the j pointer to access the next element that has to be popped. So this while loop is used to iterate through the popped array and remove elements from the stack and this for loop is used to iterate through the pushed array and add elements into the stack. And this for loop will be terminated once you reach the end of the pushed array because you're iterating till the end of the pushed array. And now outside the for loop, we are going to check if the j pointer has reached the end of the popped array. If the j pointer has reached the end of the popped array, it means we have successfully added and removed all the elements from the stack. If the j pointer is not reaching the end of the popped array, we return false as the output. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are running, like submit the code and a solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n and the space complexity is also O of n. Now let's debug the code with this example inside an IDE. So I've taken the same function which I've written in lead code and I'm calling this function inside the main method. And this function is going to have two arrays as its parameter and I've taken the first example inputs for pushed and popped arrays and I've placed two breakpoints inside this method. Now let's debug the code. So this is the initial pushed array and this is the initial pop array and the stack is empty. J is equal to 0 and I is also equal to 0. Now we are going to push the first element into the stack. So 1 will be added into the stack. So here you can see the size of the stack has been increased to 1 and 1 has been added into the stack. Now the stack is not empty. This is true. J is 0 
and popped length is 5 0 is less than 5 that is true and popped of 0 is 4 which is not matching so this will fail so we are not entering this while loop and in the next iteration i is equal to 1 stack size is 1 pushed of 1 is element 2 so 2 will be added into the stack so here you can see 2 has been added into the stack and now this condition has failed so it won't go inside the while loop now i is equal to 2 and the second element is 3 so 3 will be added into the stack so here you can see 3 has been added into the stack now again this condition will fail because stack dot peak is 3 and popped of 0 is 1 both are not matching so again now i is equal to 3 and pushed of i is equal to 4 so 4 will be added into the stack here you can see 4 has been added into the stack stack dot peak is 4 popped of 0 is 4 so both are matching so it will enter the while loop and now stack dot pop will remove 4 from the stack so here you can see now 4 will be removed there you see 4 has been removed now j plus plus will increment j to 1 now j is 1 stack is not empty j is less than 5 and stack dot peak is 3 and popped of 1 is 5 both are not matching so it won't enter into the stack now i is equal to 4 pushed of i is equal to 5 so add 5 into the stack so 5 has been added into the stack now stack is not empty 1 is less than 4 and stack dot peak is 5 and popped of 1 is also 5 so it will enter and stack dot pop will remove 5 and now j plus plus so j is equal to 2 now and now again stack dot peak is 3 and popped of 2 is 3 so it will enter stack dot pop will remove 3 because last in first out the last element which has entered the stack is 3 so first it will come out 3 will come out and now j is equal to 3 and now stack dot peak is 2 and popped of 3 is 2 so it will enter 2 will be removed j plus plus j is 4 stack dot peak is 1 popped of 4 is also 1 so it will enter it will remove the last element that is 1 and j plus plus is 5 and now j is equal to 5 and pop dot length is also 5 so this condition will fail so we come out of the while loop and also so this condition will fail and now we are checking if j which is equal to 5 pop dot length is also 5 so we return true so true will be returned for this which is being stored inside the result variable and now we return the result as true so here you can see the result is returned as true and that is matching our output that's it guys that's the end of the video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one